I am the God that he left thee. I am the Lord, your healer. And I said my word, and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. This is his word. I am the God that he let me. I am the Lord, your healer. And I sent my word, and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. This is God's word. It's his promise. In Exodus 15, verse 26, he says, I am the God that healeth thee. In Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed us. The Bible says his word will not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. God's word in the name of Jesus is more powerful than cancer, heart disease, or any disease that you can name today. So let's put his word on our lips and let his healing come to us as we sing it to him. You are the God that healeth me. Let his healing come as we sing this song. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Sing it. You are the God. You are the God that He left me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Yes, you are. everyone and welcome to Stronger Immunity Healthier Community Health Webinar. I'm Anais Charles and with me today is Sanisa Simon and we are your weekly hosts for this online webinar. I want to extend a very special welcome to all of you who have come out here with us tonight. I am confident that you are going to be in for a treat. Now as you know our usual aim of this program is to basically encourage healthier and stronger communities and this is why at every webinar you will be having good information about how to have a healthier lifestyle but before we begin we will now have a word of prayer dear lord and heavenly father just want to thank you so much for this wonderful message that you've given to us to spread to the world I'm asking that you allow us to take the information that we have gained here tonight and apply it actively in our lives and to continue to share it with others. 
I'm asking that you also bless the proceedings in your holy name. Amen. 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 So, Sinesis, you want to hear a cool fact about water? Sure. <laughs> Did you know that 68.7% of the fresh water on planet Earth is trapped in glaciers? Now, that is quite a lot of water. Imagine if it defrost. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, you know, what's interesting is that this evening, we are also going to be talking about water and how good it is for our bodies. We will be having Miss Beverly E. Topping present to us on the topic of water. Now, Living in the presence of God and being just where he wants her to be is what makes life beautiful and interesting for Beverly John Topping. It all began at the age of 13 when Beverly watched a documentary feature on the life of Mother Teresa. This sparked a passion and a desire to live and work for others in need. Being a missionary was constantly on her mind. After the completion of her bachelor's in media technology at the University of Surrey, England, she decided to enter the field of medicine. However, during her access to medicine year pre-med at the College of West Anglia, Beverly was affected with a skin disorder called eczema. The treatment recommended by the doctors to treat this uncomfortable condition involved the constant use of steroids. This is where Beverly decided to shift her interest from conventional medicine to herbal medicine. While pursuing a bachelor's in herbal medicine at the University of East London, she felt called to go study at one of the schools at Wildwood Lifestyle Center and Hospital in Georgia. Ms. Topping is now certified and trained from the Wildwood Lifestyle Center and Hospital in preventative and lifestyle medicine as a medical ministry practitioner where she studied and worked for four years. Yeah. She has also had the privilege opportunity to work with some of the greater New York Conference churches where she spearheaded and conducted medical missionary seminar courses, health seminars and workshops as well as health expos. She has also been privileged to work with the Northeastern Conference in New York, where she conducted and taught hydrotherapy seminars, seminars sorry, herbal botany, as well as yeah. sanitarium. One of the best experiences to date was teaching health class to the kindergarten level and grades one through eight at the Jackson Heights Seventh-day Adventist School in New York. The founder and CEO of a Gentle Touch Health and Educational Services in Barbados, Beverly has a keen interest in women's and children's health. Currently undertaking her master's in public health at the University of West Indies, Caveville, she strongly believes that God has prepared her for such a time as this. As a global health consultant, she enjoys working on a community-based projects and spearheading global sustainable development community-based programs to fight non-communicable diseases in children and women via the use of promoting agriculture, education and good nutrition, a healthy lifestyle as well. She looks forward to someday having a nonprofit organization for children community health clubs in Barbados and the Caribbean and a birthing center for women of all social and economic backgrounds in Barbados. Now, after our presentation, we will have a Q&A segment. So all participants and viewers, you can feel free to drop your questions in the chat as she goes through her presentation. And we will present these questions to Beverly at the end of that presentation. Sister Beverly, the floor is yours. Wow, wow, wow. That was beautiful. I never heard my um, feels um, sung so nicely from someone else. That's Thank you so much for having me. Good evening, everyone. Um, pardon the background. I'm still at university right now. I have midterms coming up, but it's such a pleasure to be here. And this um, afternoon session, I do pray it'll be a blessing to you um, and that we will learn together. So that's my plan that we learn together because I'm always learning because some of the questions are asked at presentations, I'm like, okay, I didn't really know that before and I'll look, at, look a bit more to it. So 
let's go right into the, or, to our presentation. Um, and as you said quite carefully that there will be questions that will be asked at the end of the presentation. So please um, have them lined up now. We're looking at hydro therapy now. I don't, I can't see who's on and I'd like to know if anyone um, want to tell me what they know already what hydrotherapy is because anyone wants to say if they can, um, if they're allowed to say what <laughs> to, and to interact with me. Of course, of course they can. Okay, good. Thank you. Does anyone know what I've, I've, I've heard of what hydrotherapy is or was, what have you? Can anyone just give me their definition of what they've heard or thought? Don't be shy. I won't bite your head off. <laughs> I do like people little, very much. Sorry? Sorry, yeah. From the little I know about it, I think it's about kind of treating you with, treating diseases with water, kind of? Yes, yes. It is treating diseases with water. And it's the use of hot and cold water. Now, I want to say this, that many persons believe that hydrotherapy um, is not as, as, it doesn't work, it's not as prevalent, what have you. And I want to tell you the truth that before being into the field, if you had told me that hydrotherapy um, does work and, and does help, I probably would have said to you when I was pursuing, um, when I started my, my course in um, conventional medicine, I probably would have said to you, no way, absolutely not, can't be done. But after having, um, I graduated in 2008, um, the four years working there and traveling abroad and doing um therapy, et cetera, and now it's 2020. So I've pretty much been working in this field for, I think, 12 years. And so I can say to you, I've seen it do um, marvelous things over and over again. So let's go out the presentation because I think I, I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> I want to use the time wisely that I do have. Hydrotherapy um, is very good because as a natural remedy, um, it is available to everyone. Now, when you have to buy medication, et cetera, um, you know that there's a cost to it. Now, the only time you pay for water is when you pay the water bill or what have you. So it, it's available to pretty much everyone, depending on where you are. It probably doesn't have a drought, <laughs> at least like droughts in other um, countries, etc. cetera. Um, it can be easily incorporated. This is what I love about natural remedies. Um, it is inexpensive. Thank you, Lord, for that. And it's highly effective. The problem is that many people do not believe that um, hydrotherapy or um, herbal medicine is not effective, it's actually highly effective. Now there are external uses of water. Can anyone else tell me what, the, what are the external uses of water? Someone else, <laughs> don't be shy, I'm not here to bite you. What are some of the external uses of water? Bathing. Bathing. I knew that probably Julian somebody would say would answer. I want someone else from um, who's listening to answer, but that's okay. Bathing is one of them. Let's go right ahead. Bathing daily. Now, believe it or not, there are certain cultures um, when you travel and what have you, you realize that um, having a shower every day is not a norm for them. And so in my travels as a missionary, etc., when I was with certain cultures and whatnot, it really it shocked me because you know in Barbados. You know, in Barbados, we don't bathe. Your children, you know, your parents would call you, you know, mm-hmm. But some cultures, they literally only bathe once a week. And, um, and also in that culture, the father of the culture would, they'll create a bath and the father, the patriarch of the home, he would have that bath first and then the, the mother and then the children. So yes, we are so fortunate in Barbados to be able to have our running water, have our showers, et cetera. Um, be able to have a fresh, clean shower every single day or bath, depending on what you have. But there's also a process that we, um, we overlook when it comes to bathing. And that process is what we do when we, when we normally shower, we normally have a rag or we have a washcloth or we have a sponge, whatever. And in the process of you um, rubbing your body with the rag, and the, you're actually exfoliating your skin and removing the dead cells and um, causing you, giving yourself um, a, a nice glow. Now, this may sound a bit weird to some persons um, because they don't use, some people don't use rags or, or, or some form of, of, of towel to, to cause that exfoliation on the skin, but that's what it actually does. It helps to remove um, the debris, the old dead cells in the body, et cetera, when you use some form of method of rubbing and washing your body off with the water. So for those who don't use the rag or have you, or think your skin will become too dry, it's actually a very good way of exfoli exfoliating the skin. And it helps uh, the skin to breathe. You know, you're getting rid of a lot of debris, et cetera, from the toilet of the day, et cetera, from the days before, et cetera. So 
Bathing is really a very good use of, it, um, of water externally. We also have washing clothes. We do know that clean clothes makes a person feel a whole lot better. And also to work in the hospital, I worked in the hospital in England, also in America. And I can tell you one of the things that was very priority, particularly um, when we have um, persons that were severe illness in certain parts of the hospital, cancer patients, et cetera, it's very important to change the linen um, frequently because when you're sleeping and you're lying in that bed or what have you, your body, um, you're sweating and what have you, and you know, all germs back to what have you, you know, your, your daily lie in that bed in the hospital. So it's very important to change the linen as frequently as possible to reduce any um, infections. If you think about the pandemic right now, it will be um, unfair to have persons lying in um, with the flu or the or virus to be lying in the same linen continually because you're not helping the environment at all. So washing clothes and washing linen is very important. In addition to cleansing, water treatments can assist the body's effort to heal infections, injuries, and a multitude of other discomforts and diseases. Water's healing advantages, um, these are some of the advantages of, of, the, of using water. It has no side effects. Now, I'm not bashing drugs or medication. I do want to say this disclaimer before I continue. I'm not saying that no one should ever use drugs, et cetera, because I know I'm coming up to some um, information that probably will say, well, you know, that can work there. Drugs is at its best in an emergency. When the emergency is gone, ascertain the cause and try to do what you can to um, eliminate the cause. So if you're doing, if you're having practicing bad habits, you remove that bad habit to help have a better lifestyle. When it comes to drugs, as an LMP, I never touch person's drugs. That's something that they work with the physicians and they work with. So even if you're having, if you come to me or you, or you want to do hydrotherapy for treatment, a hydrotherapist should never touch the person's drugs or medication they're on. That should be worked out with their and their physician. Okay, so I need to make that point very clear. Do not touch the person's drugs. That's something that they have to work out with the physician and themselves. Okay, you're there just there to guide and to um, follow instruction as given when it comes to certain treatments. Now, water has no side effects as drugs do. It can be easily applied. There are no toxins or waste products. And it also eliminates toxins. Even the very fact of drinking water. Now you'll see me drinking water periodically throughout the presentation because I, you know, when I feel that dehydrated, I, I need to consume some water. And I sip the water as I go through the day. I don't just gulp it all down. Now there are a few um, treatments. I, I will be showing you. Uh, do, I'll be doing a, a, a presentation, um, a demonstration of one of the treatments, another treatment. Um, but I think it's very helpful for the time of the pandemic, etc. Um, but I'm going to be showing you here a, a few here. Now, one of the treatments that's very effective is called a contrast bath. And when you think of the word contrast, what do you think? And then one time when you hear the word contrast, what comes to your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I didn't hear that. Say that again. Someone had in the chat opposites and they see hot and cold. Yes, excellent. So it is when you see contrast, definitely you see um, you think of hot and cold. And that's exactly what the contrast bath is. Now, here's what happens to the body when hot and cold water is applied to the skin. Now, this here is like a blood, is like um, your blood vessel. Okay. When heat is applied to your blood, let's go back, blood vessel, normal blood vessel, um, nothing's happened to it, it's just there. Now, when heat is applied to your blood vessel, what do you think happens? The blood vessel expands because you have heat. So the blood vessel expands, and that's called dilation. It expands, and when um, you add the coal, this changes the blood vessel size and it, um, and it, become, it constricts. So when you add the hot, it, when you add the hot, it expands. When you add the coal, it constricts. It becomes a lot smaller. This change in blood vessel size increases your circulation. You have more oxygen and nutrients are brought to the affected area and the removal of toxins and other waste products is sped up. As a result, there's rapid healing. Now this is important to understand the concept of um, hydrotherapy. It's not a farce, it's not just something you just do, apply hot and cold, what have you. There is actual science taking place in the body as you apply the hot and cold over that particular area of ailment, et cetera. Now what happens, the process, your, your, your blood is built from the food that you eat. So if you eat healthy food, you make good blood. If you eat junk food, can anyone tell me what kind of blood that they will make? Just keep that, keep that answer. If you eat junk food, of course you're gonna have junk blood. Now the blood is important because the, and the oxygen, the oxygen takes the, um, the, the nutrient um, to the ox oxygen in the blood, 
oxygen, oxygenated blood takes the nutrients to the cells, to so every cell in your body, the cells that makes up the tissues and tissues makes up, makes up your organs, like your heart, your liver, um, your spleen, your kidneys, etc. So oxygenated blood takes the nutrients to the cells and the organs in your body. And those nutrients are important for healing. And like I said, if you eat junk food, you make junk blood. If you eat good food, you make good blood. So, but in that, the, the blood, you also have macrophages, et cetera. These are the fighter cells, okay? So they help to remove um, toxins, to kill any bacteria, what germ, what have you, in the body to promote healing. So when you have that rapid heat, hot and cold, the, the, blood, the vessel is opening and is closing, opening and closing like that, you have a speed up of the blood flow in the area. And say, for instance, you have a sprained ankle, or you have, let's say you have an a, a infection on your foot, a sore on your foot that's open up, and you are placing um, hot and cold therapy over that area. What will happen is that the blood vessels in that area, would con with the blood would increase over that area to bring more macrophages, to bring more blood to that area, to promote healing. And it is really important to understand that the, the science behind this, you can see and understand more clearly how um, hydrotherapy works when it comes to treatment. Now, how do you use, um, first of all, what are the indications for the use of a contrast bath? Infections, very easy. Now, a sore like that, um, persons, um, you know, probably have an infection, you scratch, what have you, it appears, et cetera. You apply the hot and cold over that area. And the hot is as hot as the person can bear it. You must not burn persons. I, I do have a few precautions that I will mention shortly. So the, hot, the contrast bath is very good for infections. It's very good for injuries to the muscles or joints. It's very good for arthritis, for persons with arthritis. It's very good for bone fractures, yes. And this is why I had to mention what happens with the blood, why it's so important to understand the whole concept of how it works. Like I said before, if you, if you have a fractured area and you're applying hot and cold, I'm not saying to don't get, go get a cast on, okay? But say that you're not in a position to get hot and cold on immediately, a cast on immediately, you apply hot and cold to that, What's happening to that area where you're applying the hot and cold? So you broke here. Because you're applying the hot and cold there, more blood is coming to that, that, to that area to help promote healing of, of that area. So it does work well with um, bone fractures, but I'm not saying to you, do not go and get a cast on your hand or your foot. Please go to the hospital. It's also very good for swelling. Um, you know, persons who have edema, et cetera, um, it's very good for, um, for swelling. Now, how and what is it you need to have your contrast bath? Of course, you can see here you have two bowls, you have a kettle, and you have a, a, um, a, a jug of, of water and a towel. And what you really will do is this, you fill one bowl has the hot water, one bowl has the cold water. And you go on, sorry, and what you will do, you will place, say it's your hand that having the arthritis pain, what have you, you will place your hand um, into the, cold, the hot water, always start with the hot, hot water, as hot as you can bear it. Do not burn yourself. As hot as you can bear it, you put your hand in the hot water for three minutes. After three minutes, you take your hand over to the, to the, um, to the, the coal for 30 seconds. So you do that, repeat that three or five or seven times. So it's three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. Three minutes hot again, 30 seconds cold. cold. And the reason why you have your pitcher of, um, of water and your hot water is that the water will lose its heat. So you can keep topping up that water to maintain the heat um, in the hot water. If the water will get, will get um, the cold water will get a little cool, you have um, cold water to, uh, to add to that. Now it's very important to note this, that yes, I'm speaking with the hand. Now if the problem is with your foot, a person had the problem with their foot, they can have two buckets. Uh, you see you sprain your ankle. The same thing you place your, your hand in the bucket, you do that with your foot, the, the, the foot that it has the, the problem, you place it in the hot water first and you go over to the cold water. So it's three minutes hot and 30 seconds cold, okay? That's three minutes hot, 30, 30 seconds cold. Now to receive maximum benefit, it's wise to rest for at least 30 minutes after any hydrotherapy treatment before re returning to your regular activities. Because what happens is that you're having a shift, a pull, what have you, um, with the blood vet in the the, the blood in um, your blood vessels. Some persons actually, after certain treatments, um, like the hot, the hot and cold shower, which I'll show you shortly, some persons can come out feeling a little bit dizzy. So it's important to at least, at least rest for at least 30 minutes. Now let's say that you have the problem or the issue you want to take care of. Let's say you have that issue at a part of your body where you cannot emerge, a part of your body where you cannot emerge. 
very easy. You get two rags or two washcloths or a towel, depending on the area you're working on. And you put, you have a towel or a washcloth or wash, a hand towel in the hot and one in the cold. And you take the, um, you take the, the towel or rag, what have you, out of the hot, squeeze it and you place it over the area for three minutes. You put it back, you go for the coal, you place the coal, um, squeeze the rag and put the coal over that area for 30 seconds, back and forth, because you're having a revulsive effect, okay? Now, contrast bath precautions. Use warm water, use warm and cool bath when there is, and this is very important, as I mentioned to you, I was gonna mention some indications of when not to use hot water. Use warm and cool bath when there is loss of feeling, okay? when there's poor circulation and if you are a diabetic. Because the reason why, particularly diabetics, you don't want to immerse the person's foot or hands into any um, hot water because diabetics, they suffer from neuropathy. And what it really is, is that they have a loss that they cannot really feel when something is too hot or too cold, rather too hot. So you want to avoid immersing a person who is diabetic um, foot or hand or what have you into, um, particularly foot, um, into hot, hot water, hands as well too, because they have low, they, 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 because the nerve endings are, are dying out, they really can't feel when things are too hot and they can burn them and they can, that can lead to other complications um, for diabetic persons. So you want to be very mindful of that. This is especially common in diabetes. Um, for those, I'm just reiterating, for, the, for these people, it's very important to test the water temperature as a general rule, when using your elbow, if your elbow, if you put your, hat, you put your elbow into the hot water and your elbow cannot stay there comfortably, then you know that, it's, that you cannot proceed with that treatment. You know it's too hot because your elbow has a very thin skin. So the moment your elbow is in that, that water, if it's really very hot, you'll be coming right back up immediately. So when your elbow cannot sit in that water comfortably, then you do not proceed with a person who is diabetic, et cetera. Cool or warm water, the temperatures will be able to be distinguished because I have persons asking, suppose you don't have a stove or what have you. I've been a mission field um, and not everyone has a stove or what have you, or they don't have um, a pot to do what have you. If you have tap water and you boil water, or if you have tap water and you use any cool water, there will be a varying difference. If you don't have hot water in your home, you just have um, cool water, you, yeah, you, can, you can actually put, the, put it on the fire. But if you, if you run tap water, if you don't have um, a fridge or if you're in the mission field, what have you, don't have a fridge, what have you, this is just a pre-adventure. There is um, a storm in Barbados and the current goes out and, um, you still have a stove that don't work for electricity, that is. And you can actually turn the fire and you see fire, literal fire comes on. You can boil that water and the water that comes from the tap will be cooler than the boiled water. So there will always be a contrast when it comes to the water, cooler and hot. Now it's important to disinfect the equipment afterwards. Um, in the case of an infection, be sure to disinfect the equipment after treating an open sore um, or infected wound. This will prevent um, the spread of infection. The contrast bath has helped many people regain their health without having to use harmful or expensive medication. medications. This treatment can be given as needed several times a day. So I, I don't think you're gonna have an overdose if you have a contrast bath for aching arm or arthritis, what have you. You're not gonna have an overdose of it, but you must make sure that you get a rest afterwards. Now I wanna look at something that you can, everyone can take part in. It's called the contrast shower. Very effective, I've seen it work for many loved ones, I also, also with the clients, when I was at Wild, etc. The contrast shower. This treatment acts as a healthy stimulant and energizer, promoting good circulation all around physical health. Now, it's important to note that now that you have a pandemic is going on, etc., one of the things that I love about the contrast shower is that it boosts the immune system before you even leave your very own home. Now, the contrast shower, can, you can have a contrast shower every day, as an everyday just routine, and then you can have the contrast shower as a treatment. Let's go on with this. One of the beautiful things about the contrast shower is, uh, was discovered by um, penicillin, um, this, um, the person who discovered penicillin, um, and it's Sir, it's Sir Alexander Fleming. And he learned, apart from discovering penicillin, he learned that in the secretions of the nose, yes, and this is important because of what we're going through right now with the pandemic, he learned that the secretions of the nose, the throat, 
um, um, they both have, um, they produce something called um, lysosome. Now lysosome is a natural antiseptic that the body produces itself. So he, he learned that there's a specific secretion, um, lysosome in the nose and the throat area. Now, let me ask a question. Where is the pandemic attacking? attacking? Where, the the COVID-19, where does it attack right now? Can anyone tell me where, the, where does the COVID-19 attack? Where does it attack you? Or what is it, what is it entry point to the body? The nose and mouth. Nose and mouth. Is this someone who answered before? Because I can't see who's talking right now. Yes, yes the nose. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. The nose, yes, and the mouth. These are two of the main entry points, or rather the entry point. I mean, some, you know, there are um, instituted the eyes, once drop, it's good the eyes as well, so you can have that. But yes, the main entry points are the nose and the mouth. Now, the beautiful thing about the, the contrast shower, and, and I'll be showing you, I'll be demonstrating the treatment after it will also help as well too, is that, when the secretions in your nose and your, um, of your throat are slightly acidic in, in reaction, this substance is, a, is active against invading germs, helping to prevent colds. One of the best ways to keep these secretions slightly acidic and to maintain effective defense against colds is the contrast shower. <laughs> it's to take a daily hot and cold shower. Now, to take a daily hot and cold shower, all you do, you go in the shower. This is if you have, um, this is if you have um, hot and cold water. And I'll tell you what you can do if you don't have hot and cold water. If I forget to tell you what you can do if you don't have hot and cold water, please remind me at the end that I need to let you know what you can do if you don't have hot and cold water in your house. Now, on a day, daily basis, when you go in the shower, you know you go under the hot water or lukewarm water, and you just, you know, slather your body with the nice warm water because the day is about to start and you want to revive and what have you. you have a long night's beautiful stress. You go have your shower and the warm, you go in the, the warm water, wet your body. You take your rag after and you soap your body up and you, 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 you know, you really scrub all that grime and stuff away. Yeah, mm -hmm, whatever. And then at the end of the shower, you go back on and you wash all that soap off with your nice warm water. But just before you leave the shower, turn it all the way cold and just run your body around it for at least 30 seconds and then turn the shower off and you come out of there. That is what it is to take a, a regular daily cold shower, hot and cold shower. You start with a hot shower, it's been like you, then you switch to cold and you're done. Now as a treatment, um, the produce, produce, procedure is similar, but include repetition. And this is how it, it actually happens. Three minutes hot, and note, note, note that, that, that number three, a very important number. Three minutes hot and 30 to 60 seconds cold. Three minutes hot and 30 to 60 seconds cold. Now, what you do is that when you're in your shower, you know your shower. You know which part of your shower is neutral. You know which part is hot. You know which part is very hot. So what you do is that as you're taking your shower, when you, as a treatment, so you have a cough, cold, flu, what have you, you will go into, you will go midway where the, it's not, it's not, it's hot, but it's not extremely hot. You go on the, on the shower when it's hot, like extremely hot, and you just, you know, allow the, the, the hot water to be on your body. Now don't stand there in front of the shower like that, unless you have those nice, and, and I, technology is so good, you can have those in your own home now. Unless you have those really nice showers, that those jet showers I've seen in person's homes, where they have the, the jet showers come from all directions. If you have that, you can stand and have it propel hit every part of your body. If you don't have it, if you're like me, you have a regular shower, yes, you go in the hot water and you just turn your body around and around and you just enjoy it for three minutes. Just don't get giddy now. Just turn, you know, turn as you can, not to get dizzy, around along for three minutes. When you finish that, you go to cold for 30 to 60 seconds, okay? After that 36 seconds is over, go back to your heart, but you're gonna go slightly hotter than it was before, okay? So you go slightly hotter than it was before and you do that for at least another three minutes. Once you finish that three minutes, go back to the cold for 30 to 60 seconds. When you finish that cold, you go straight back to the heart, but this time you go a lot hotter than it was the first and second time to the hottest you can be. And you do three minutes, then you go all the way back to cold. Now you can do that, repeat that three, five, or seven times. Then go back to the nice hot shower for another three minutes. It will feel very good. So get aggressive and switch to the cold more quickly for a more rapid transition to a colder temperature. 
and have hot and cold reminders here. Three to five cycles, I say seven because seven is the perfect number as well. Three minutes hot, 30 to 60 seconds cold, okay? So that's three minutes hot, 30 to 60 seconds cold when you have in the contrast um, shower. It's important once again that you get that rest for 45 minutes to hour when it comes to the contrast shower because your body, your entire body is having that what? The dilation and contraction effect. You're having an um, open the blood vessels and the closing of the, of the blood vessels and your body can get, and I've seen persons literally get quite, quite dizzy, um, clients, patients at Wildwood, we have to steady them to take them to the room so they can rest, okay? So it's important to rest for at least 45 minutes to an hour after your contrast um, shower. Now to conclude and wrapping up here, the laws of nature which God designed to govern the universe also govern the human bodies, keeping them in harmonious working order. Living in harmony with the laws of our being is the surest way to preserve, restore, and um, physical health. Natural remedies are far more effective when God's health principles are practiced in daily life. The laws of health, we know them, um, some of us know them, by eating nutritious food, drinking plenty of water, eating, um, exercising outdoors, abstaining from all harmful things that are bad and being temperate in that which is good. So you want to abstain from drugs, alcohol, um, teas that are caffeine, caffeinated beverages, caffeinated foods, etc. And getting that rest. And I know when you're young, you want to burn the candle on both ends until you become a lot older. You know what? I can't keep this up. So you want to make sure you get an ample rest at nighttime. And of course, you, it's important to have a trust in and loving relationship with our Lord and Savior. Now, who can tell me who they think this man is? Because hydrotherapy therapy didn't just start in my time. Who can tell me who this man is here? Can anyone tell me who this man is? We can't see the picture at the moment. Sorry, we're not seeing our screen, Beverly. Oh, when did you stop seeing my screen? We, we never saw your screen, Beverly. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. All this time I thought you were seeing my screen. So you didn't realize that your screen wasn't on. It is okay. We enjoy your presentation. You yes, can just share yes. a screen with you. Yes. It's on your computer, but it's not being shared to us at this point in time. I, I thought we shared the screen earlier. Well, that was just a test. All this time I'm talking and no one saw my screen. I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me. I was wondering if I could see my screen myself, but no one can see my screen. Okay, let's continue. Um, I'm trying to screen, screen share right now. Is that there, Jillian? Yes, you can see your screen. Can you just need to bring up. Oh, you never saw all of this? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry. This is when you have no understanding of technology at some times. Yes, please forgive Beverly. <laughs> So let me just go back so you can see just a few things, the contrast bath, I'm just gonna show you the equipment that's needed here. Can you see that? Yes, please. Yes, yes you can, can see. see. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, everyone. I, please forgive me. I didn't know you couldn't see my screen. I was thinking you can see it all the time. So I was showing all this stuff here. Um, that's all right. We're coming to the, um, the very end. Um, <laughs> that is quite funny. Um, okay, so we talked about the lysosomes, the importance of the lysosomes, etc. And we know what the lysosomes do, right? We do know that um, it's very, as a very good natural antibi um, antibiotic, antiseptic, um, works to prevent um, the invasions of um, germs, bacteria, etc. Okay, so I was just showing you the person in the contrast shower, the treatment. And at least, did you understand what I was saying to you when I was um, showing, talking to you about the, how to go about the treatment? Did you understand that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, I have a wonderful audience that understands that. That's wonderful. So we have three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold, and resting afterwards. And I want to ask you, we talk about the laws of health, practice laws of health, eating nutritious, um, drinking lots of water, eating, ex exercising outdoors, abstaining, um, resting, trusting in God. And anyone can tell me who is this man? Who is this man? Who do you think this man is? Naaman. Who said that? Was that someone who answered before? Is that... <laughs> I see yeah. we, have a, we have a very shy bunch of persons on today. Don't worry, it's the first. That's why, you know, it gets better. Um, so then we have Naaman. And so hydrotherapy was nothing that was practiced just today. We have a, a beautiful example of hydrotherapy being practiced way back in the Bible. And can anyone tell me what Elisha had, not Elijah, Elisha asked 
Naaman to go do? I'm checking if the same person's going to answer. Okay, we have any comments? Um, dip in water seven times. Yes. He was asked to dip in the water seven times. And what happened when he dipped in the water seven times? He came up a complete new man. And that's the reason why, even though in, in practice they say three and five times, I always um, go, um, not, not, they don't just say that, but that's a rule of thumb, three and five times. I always also encourage seven times as well, too, for repetitions, etc. So we have Naaman who literally um, was healed when, um, by following the instruction of Elijah to go dip let him come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Go and wash in the Jordan River seven times and you will be clean. And what happened? He, he was clean. He did come up quite clean. So hydrotherapy is nothing that has been just evolved out of nowhere. The Lord has been using water to help refresh his and, and cleanse his persons over many years. That is the end. I'm so sorry that you missed all the presentation on screen. But I do love you for being so faithful. <laughs> okay, at this time, I want to entertain questions before I do the demonstration. Should I do the demonstration and entertain questions? What shall I do? Before we, go, before we move on, um, Sister Topping, you yes. did ask us to remind you about the, doing the hot and cold water if you don't have the facilities. Yes. The Thank you. Sorry about that. Now, if you don't have um, hot and cold water in your home, thank you for reminding me of that. I appreciate that a whole lot. Do not despair. Do you remember when we, um, um, some of you may not be as young to remember, when we didn't have showers and stuff in our homes, we had to go to the standpipe to get the water. I was in that generation. I still had a little bit of that. And so we would use the bucket to have our shower, right? For those who are my age or, you know, older. And... What you can do if you don't have um, hot and cold shower in your house, you get a bucket and the bucket will have your hot water. So you get the bucket, you fill it up with, um, with you boil the water on the stove and you make sure you fill that bucket up with the hot water. You blend it with some tap water to make it as hot as you can bear it. You will shower, you will wash yourself from the bucket with the hot water. You know, you set that up. You know, those who in my generation knows what that's like. We've been doing it for, we did it, you know, when we were younger. You wet your body with the hot water, then you take your rag and you soak yourself, etc. And then you're done, you wash yourself off with the hot water and then you take the bucket, the best part, and you throw all that nice hot water all over your body. And when you finish that, you go to the tap in the shower, turn it on to cold, but it's only cold, and you just wash yourself off for 30 seconds and then you can come right out. So that's how you can use the hot and cold in your home if you don't have um, hot and cold running water. I hope that helped. Does that help anyone? <laughs> it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> so there's a, there's a remedy to that, okay? Just remember the bucket, it comes in handy all the time. Okay, so I can remove my screen now. I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I didn't know that it wasn't being um, shared. That is fine, that is fine. We were with there, you were animating, we saw it, we felt it, you moved us. So you may even realize it until after. So you're good right. to go. Thank you. All right. Should I do the question asked before I do the demonstration or yes, because you're gonna do the question and the question and answer first, and then we'll do the the demonstration after. Am I good for time? Am I am, am I yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, thank we're good you. For time. Yeah, we got 20 minutes. Let's go. Okay, thank you. All right. So our first question, let's see here, is what you refer to cold water, do you mean room temperature cold or ice water cold? Ice water cold, or room temperature is room temperature and cold water is cold water. So add ice. And the only reason, I, the only time I would not add ice to a treatment um, would be if I'm, I'm working on the person who's, who has arthritis. Because you never want to use cold on a person who has arthritis with ice. You would use tap water, room temperature water, or slightly um, chill water, but never cold water with a person who has arthritis because it can actually cause them to seize it more pain. You want to keep the water cool and hot. Arthritis, okay. cool and hot, yeah. And the, the, they will still feel that contrast. All right, so our next question is, is there a, white, a right way of drinking water? Is there a right yes. way of drinking water? A very good question. There is a right way of drinking water. You don't, the right way of drinking water is sipping the water and not gulping it down. As you see, I was taking a few sips. 
Mm. Good stuff. Yes, it is good stuff. <laughs> um, the reason being that you don't, when you don't gulp the water down. But now, let me ask, when do people normally gulp water down? When they're super thirsty. Just exactly. Rack. Exactly. And what happens is that when the body is dehydrated and you gulp the water down, as quick as you gulp that water down, some, I'll tell you for sure, you can go into the bathroom and put it out immediately. Now, what happens is when you um, gulp the water down, you find that you're running more frequently to the bathroom because the body now has to do what it needs to do before. The water is there to help flush the body, the toxins, help the build, it also helps in, in building um, your blood as well too. And it also stops blood from being so um, sticky and what have you. So that's why some persons who have high blood pressure, they need to, um, to and kidney problems, they need to make sure they drink, they're consuming en enough water. Now, when you sip the water, it allows the body to be more well hydrated over a long period of time. And I'm not saying um, take two hours to sip a cup of water now, okay? But you take your time, you sip the water, that the water can do what it needs to do, and you're not rushing to the bathroom like crazy. And the person said, well, when I drink water, I find that I'm going to the bathroom to, to pass water more often. That only happens when your body is dehydrated. If you're well hydrated and you're sipping your water throughout the course of the day, you will find you need to run to the bathroom a whole lot less than when you are not, than when you're, than when you're hydrated. Okay. All right. So sips. Drink our sip. water. Sips. Sip that water. <laughs> awesome. So our next question is, what is the reason for resting afterwards? I assume they mean for the yes. seven cycle. <laughs> yes. Very good question. Um, remember I, I mentioned, and I want to show you the blood vessels. What, your, your, um, think, of a, think of the holes, okay? I think of the blood vessels as, as a hose. You know, you have the garden hose, yeah. and you, you turn the tap on. I'm sure many, many, of, many of us have probably ex, um, experimented with this here before. The tap is on running, and we bend the hose at the, at the, at the end. And what happens is that the, what happens to the pressure? The pressure literally builds up. So the moment you open that hose, what happens? The water does what? It gushes right out. So what happens is that your body, when it's on the hot and cold, you have, what you have in rapidly is the open and the closing of your blood vessels like that. Open and closing. So what it does, as it opens and closes more frequently, it causes a surge of the blood through that vessel to that area where you, where you want to be treated. That back and forth can actually cause first to become a little unsteady and, and giddy. And that's why it's always important to have them rest um, after they have a treatment. So it, and, and it may be a very simple rest. You might not need it, but as a precaution, we always ask persons to rest um, at least 45 minutes. And depending on the type of treatment they're having as well, because some high-type treatments are more in aggressive than others. I pretty much see some, some very mild um, treatments. The hot, the hot and crap, um, the contrast shower can be a bit aggressive depending on the temperature you're using. And we all know that women can take heat more than men do. Yes, we know that. That's okay. You forgive me. <laughs> so we do know that depending on the temperature you're using, your blood, your blood levels, your, your, sorry, your, your, you can get become, your blood, your, your blood rate, your heart rate can just drop really, really fast because the hotter it is, vessels on, on, on open it up, more blood, it can cause your blood rate to drop really fast and you can get a little unsteady. That's why when persons have heart, heart conditions, I need cardiovascular problems, we try to avoid them not using the sauna by themselves or um, any steam rooms by themselves because that heat can drop their blood, their blood um, pressure so low it can make them a little bit unsteady. Yes, that's the reason why we rest afterwards. All right, noted. Thank you so much. Our next question is, why is three minutes the designated time for the hot water? Why is three minutes the designated time for the hot water? You know, that's a really very good question. That's why it's um, a very good question. I don't think I've ever um, um, had that question asked before, but I do know that the length of time with the three minutes, it gives the, the body a, the, chat, the heat, the chance to penetrate in that area, that vessel, before you add the cold. Um, I've been asked that question before, but it gives the body, the, um, and, the, and also too, when you're working with different um, uh, the, what I've showed you was only a few. Now, there are different um, instruments, um, um, equipment you use for hydrotherapy, the hot fermentations. It can become very, very hot, um, and it takes a while for them to release the, the steam and the heat from it. And three minutes is an adequate amount of time to have that steam release and penetrate the body, that, that, the area that you're working on. And um, if it's direct heat, like, a, um, like a, a, a rag or washed off a towel, you put it over that area, Three minutes is still enough, um, even though it's not covered over anything, to have that, that area penetrate um, with the heat for three minutes. You can go, you can do a heat and compress. Um, a heat and compress will go for much longer. But when you're doing a revulsive with the hot and cold, 
Three minutes is enough to have that heat then followed by that cold to have that repulsive effect. But you can go, I would say three to five minutes, um, depending on what treatment you're doing, but definitely um, three minutes is, is, I wouldn't say no less than three minutes. And if you're doing a contrast treatment, no more than four or five minutes. All right, okay, no problem. Now the next question we have is, at what temperature is best to drink water? It's always best to drink water at room temperature. Now I know, I know, I know you're saying, but it's so hot outside. I want to have some cold water. The, re the thing is, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm guilty of this in terms of smoothies. I am. The body really should not take anything that is too hot or too cold in it. Because what happens is that your body first has to internally, has to bring that, that beverage or, or that food, bring it down to the temperature inside before the digestion takes place. So what happens is that before, and yes, you, your body digests the water the same way. It has to go to the same, I mean, the liquids go to the same process. The body does digest um, liquids before it digests solids. Um, but the body would first have to take that, that, that temperature down before it can do what it needs to do with it. So that's why you're, 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 um, you're admonished not to drink cold water, too cold water, too hot water. What I do, would say in, in the very hot days, I would admonish persons to, you can blend the water um, but not to have too cold water. Also what happens too is that, have you ever seen what, what happens with, with oils, oil with water? Yeah, the oil tends to stay on top. Yes, so when you drink that cold water and you've just had, and you may know that Bajans like their oily foods, they like their fried foods, etc. And you've just had some nice fried plantain, mm -mm, yummy, yummy, with all that nice oil sitting inside of it. And, you, and the body's breaking on that nice plantain and it's separating the, 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 the lipids, the fatty lipids, etc. what have you, from the starches, etc. And the protein, you know, it's just, it's just moving all this stuff together. It has to deal with that oil. And that all sits there for a while because the bowel needs to be able to break that, um, to break that, 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 that oil down. So you're actually causing, you're, you're compromising your digestion when you have cold water. To be honest, you're not supposed to be drinking and um, eating anyway to begin with. Um, you should either drink 30, yes, I can see someone who's guilty there. <laughs> you either drink, and I hope I'm answering the question now, before you eat, you, you either drink 30 minutes before you eat or you drink two hours after you eat. Because what happens, like I said earlier, the body first has to get rid of the liquids before it can take care of the solids. What happens is that when you intercept that and you drink and you eat, you're also robbing the body from um, the digestive enzymes in your mouth, but the starch begins digesting in your mouth. You have the amylase in your mouth that begin, where the digestion begins for the starches. And starches are a lot, um, are very challenging to break down. So you have to chew a lot. And when you chew, people say, oh, the bread was dry. Yes, but if you chew, the more you chew that bread, the more that your saliva mixes with that, with, that, with the starch of that bread and breaks it down. I do know that there are teenagers, teenagers inhale food, they don't chew food, they, and the food is gone. I know that. I know some men also do the same thing. You see a plate of food, and when you look around, the food is gone because they inhale the food. You need to take time to chew the food properly. And, and if you look at the, the plates of our, our Bajan culture, and lots of cultures as well too, the, the America's um, Western culture. We have a, a culture where the plate is predominantly starch. It is predominantly starch. So you need to, um, to take your time to, to chew that, that, that starch, that the, the saliva can actually mingle and help break down that starch before it goes into the, the, um, the, to the stomach, which is here, not here. It's your abs, okay, people? Get that right. Abs, stomach, abs, stomach. Abs, okay? So, so your body needs to break that starch down before it gets to the stomach, which will continue the digestion. But the, the more you, you masticate your, your food, your starches in your mouth and mix the saliva, the easier digestion be, it can be in the, in the, um, in the stomach. Have I answered your question? Did I answer your question? Did I go? I believe you did. More, more <laughs> okay. than enough. Thank you so, so much. So room temperature water is best. Um, your body doesn't have to work extra hard to cool it down and, 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 and for it to do what it has to do for the body. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So our next question is, is there any danger in taking just a hot water bath or a cold water bath? We're not doing the contrasting. It's just, if I take one or the other, is there a danger? No, there's not a danger. Um, there's only a danger. There are certain treatments um, that, um, the, like the, the, the fever treatment, um, the fever treatment is a treatment where you do use extensive heat. I mean, it's literally you're cooking the person in the hot water. 
Now that definitely, because it can drop your heart rate so low that you would not recover. Mm. So in cases of a fever treatment, yes. But if you're going to use um, hot, hot water, the only thing you want to be careful, you, don't, you burn yourself, to be quite honest, you know, um, that would be cold water um, for persons who have car- for persons who have any kind of cardiovascular problems, heart problems, I would say avoid the extreme hot, the extreme cold, because you don't want to put your body in shock now. And I do know that I've heard the gentleman said he doesn't want to bathe early in the morning because the water will give him a stroke. Look, the water will not give you a stroke. It's nothing else to call to revive your body and your heart, okay? So no, it's okay to have um, extreme because cold actually wakens the body up while heat causes the body to become um, nice and ready for sleep. That's why it's good to have a nice warm shower before you go to bed at nighttime. Um, a cold shower, and that's why it's good to end your, your showers with cold in the morning because it spikes the body up. And it also, like I said before, that contrast um, in the shower helps to produce more lysosomes in your throat and your nose. And those lysosomes are very important for combating cool flows, etc. This is why it's really very good to do a hot and cold shower before you leave home every single morning. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for your questions. So at this time, we will have um, Sister Toppin give her demonstration. Guys, pay full attention. Okay, good. Now, the reason why I chose this demonstration, um, like I said, there's so many different types of, um, of, of, of hydrotypic treatments. There, there are so many. Um, it, it is it, it bath, it's still beyond me. I haven't used, in my 20, eight years of, of, of um, practice, I have not been able to use the vast amount of um, hydrotherapy treatments that there are. This particular one is very important because it's very simple to do and it's very good for the pandemic as well. Now, am I saying that you can do this and then go out there and, and, and have persons cough on you? No, please use your discretion. I'm not saying that in any way whatsoever, okay? But what I will tell you is that um, it's very good to boost your immune system and protecting you, um, and particularly these areas um, in the midst of a pandemic, um, in the midst of not just the pandemic, but any cough, any cold, any flus, persons who suffer from sinuses, um, congestion, what have you. This treatment I'm about to show you is very simple and anyone can do it and definitely good for the pandemic as well. Too. So I'm going to push my, uh, my camera back, my, my computer back. So bear with me as I set myself up. Okay. You'll hear a little bit of bumps and the scripts and what have you. I can set them up. Okay. Here we are. I'm gonna stand at some point to, um, to do demonstration a lot, a lot better. So bear with me. Okay, get that. I'm gonna to have to remove my headpiece. Let me know if you can, let me know if you can hear me um, well without the headpiece. Now, can you hear me well without the headpiece? You've gone softer. No, you're not hearing you. Leave the headpiece in. No, you can plug it in, and but just leave it. You can don't have to put it to your ears. Just plug it in. Right. Can you hear me now? Can you still yes. Hear yes. Me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, good. Now, I'm just getting set up here, so bear with me. Okay, so what I have right now, let me make sure my head is not cut off. Thank you, Jimmy, for reminding me that early today. Now, what I have here is... Um, Towel, a nice big towel. You can also use a sheet or a blanket, okay? Um, I have a bowl here, okay? It's always good to purchase these bowls. They're very affordable, and um, I'm plugging in for a um, $3 store. Get, get you some hand. It's always good to have these bowls at home if you want to practice as a therapy. And it's also good to, to know what to do because I think every family member should be someone in the family who knows how to do hydrotherapy because it actually helps big time. And you also want to have a kettle. Because we don't have to have electric kettle. We can just have a kettle, you put our pot, you put on the stove to boil your water, okay? But I'm going to pretend that I have my boiling water here. I have my big, huge towel, or like I said, you can use a sheet or a blanket and a bowl. What's really very important to you to have, you see my head is not being chopped off when I come closer, it's important to have, um, along with that, I have... Um, some um, oils. Now, tea tree oil is really very important to use in this treatment because tea tree oil actually helps um, with fungal infections and also bacterial infections. So tea tree oil is very good. Also too, um, you can have eucalyptus oil and you can also use peppermint oil as well too, okay? Um, you can absorb peppermint oil, that's another eucalyptus. 
I probably not all peppermint oil, but you could use oil, peppermint oil. And there's one that someone mentioned, yeah, peppermint oil is here. Yes, more of that. Um, Persons mentioned this Albus oil as well too. You can use Albus oil because I know patients who use Albus Albus oil. You can use Albus oil as well too. Now, what you will do is that this is called a sinus treatment. Really very easy and simple to do. You boil the hot water. I can bring this down. Let's see, let's see if you can see that. You boil the hot water and you will. Let me make sure you can hear. I'm not covering over the mic. <laughs> okay. You boil your hot water. And you pour the hot water, steaming hot, into the bowl. Okay, I just pour it, pour it, pour it. Ooh, hot, 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 I'm burn myself. You take the oils. Let's say if you're using, you could put this oil that we're using, um, you could put some, you're also using um, tea tree oil. So whatever mint you use is okay, but also if you, if you think it's a bacterial or fungus infection, you'll know very well. If you have bacterial infection, normally your mucus is brown ugly, okay, brown or ugly, or, or um, also to you, um, it goes from green, you can have mucus that's green, very dark green, to nasty brown, okay, you want to use your eucalyptus oil, your, your tea tree oil, okay, so you will use either peppermint or eucalyptus oil, you'll use 10 drops of the peppermint, and you use only 5 drops of the tea tree oil, okay, you put that into your water, you'll just drop, drop, drop into your water, 5 drops, little drops, okay? Then you'll take your towel, sheet, or blanket, and you'll place it, let's get this right. <laughs> you'll place it right over your, um, your head and over the container, all the way over, okay? And what you will do when you're down, what you will do when you're down there, you're gonna inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. You do that for two minutes. And you come up, catch your breath, and you go down again. Come up for two minutes, go back down again. Come up, and you repeat that till you, you're there for at least 15 minutes. What will happen is that your body, you're covering your entire body with the blanket or, or, the, or, the, or the sheet or the towel. You can sit down at the table and your own home or the table to chair back. You can sit down and you can cover yourself. Sit down and you can do that sitting down. Make sure your head is already in, sheet everything over. Inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth and coming up. Now, depending on what treatment I'm getting, why I'm, I'm doing the treatment for the person depends on what I use. Now, if a person has severe um, sinus problems, I'll put this back in. I think everybody got. I think everybody got that right. Y'all got. Did y'all get that? Did y'all get that? Yes. We heard, we heard everything. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, let's see if I can explain myself here now. Okay. Depending on, on the person's severity of the problem, sinus congestion. If the person has, um, they suffer from asthma, um, and they they feel they, they don't have an attack, but they feel in the chest a bit tight. Um, if you have any emphysema, um, what have you, congestion in the chest, um, nose, upper, lower respiratory um, congestion, depending on what that person is going through, I would have the person, if it's very severe, I would have the client or the person strip completely down only in their knickers or for the males. I don't really treat males as a family member, that a child that needs it, okay? But um, for the females, I'll have that lady strip completely down in her knickers and a blanket, a sheet over completely, or she's sitting down, and the sheet is wrapped around her completely and over her head. Everything. So the entire body is um, wrapped around that, but she's only wearing a knicker. She's only wearing a knicker. And what happens is that in that treatment, her entire body is sweating, it's, it's eliminating toxins, it's producing, she's sweating. When she comes up, it's like she's having a cold draft, the contract, contract, and then she goes back down, okay? This is an excellent treatment. What, what do you think it does around this area? What do you think it does around this area? No, the throat. What do you think is happening there? Apart from relieving your congestion, what do you think is happening here and here? Can anyone tell me? It builds up the, um, the L word. Thing lysosomes, you yes. <laughs> your body, yes, definitely. So you're increasing that lysosomes there, and you're being, and, and, which you're able to now help um, combat um, 
um, germs, bacteria, etc. So you have an increased lysosomes in that area as well too. Now, after you do that, depending on how severe it is, the person will go straight to the shower and have a cool shower, just not cold, just a cool shower, and you must, absolutely must, rest for 45 minutes to an hour. Excellent for congestion, excellent for persons who have sinus problems, um, any congestion in the chest, etc. A brilliant um, um, treatment, simple and easy, just for that. You can also top the water up if it gets cold. And trust me, I've never seen, I've never heard anyone say the water is getting cold because that, that alone helps keep the heat in um, covering over. Even if you come up for those two minutes, it helps keep the, the heat in as well too. Okay, it was lovely being here. I do, I see the time is seven o'clock and it's seven one. I want to go past my time um, so I can be invited again. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, but I'm, I'm done with my, with my presentation. Any questions there? Sure, but I do know that you are, uh, you want to keep on scheduled time. And it's really very important that we do that. Ms. Beverly Toppin, I want to thank you so much for the presentation tonight. Honestly, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I myself am going to take some of these tips and try <laughs> a contrast back. It was, it was a well um, presented, you know, information that we got here tonight. Um, I hope you all to enjoy tonight's session of stronger immunity, healthier community. And once again, we are inviting you back again next week, starting at 6 p.m. Now, as you know the saying, we will have a grand time in the sun. This is what next week's session will focus on, which is sunshine. And I am confident that you will enjoy it just as much as you enjoyed this week's presentation. Indeed. And remember, we have had, been doing our lessons for the past couple of weeks. We had nutrition, diet, exercise, and you guys will receive the lesson of water by the by tomorrow, tomorrow night. You receive that in your emails that you gave us when you registered. Now, if you have any questions, if you have any queries, you can uh, email us at southernhealth.bb at gmail.com. Southernhealth.bb at gmail.com. With those lessons, we'll be sent a Google Sheet where you can answer those questions and email them back at that same address. Also, we are encouraging those of you who are receiving the lessons to just put like a little hand in the group chat, just indicating that you would have received it. And once again, we're encouraging you to come up again next week because this is good information. You do not want to miss it. It's truth, it's truth, it's truth. So before we go, let's have a word of prayer and then we will close off. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Most kind and heavenly Father, thank you once again for the information that you have brought to us through Sister Beverly Toppin. We ask, Lord, that you will bless her, that you continue to move her, that you continue to establish the plans that you have for her, and that she will be able to do what she has set out to, in her mind to do to the glory of your name and to the health of those around her. We ask, Lord, that everyone else who was listening today, that they too may have been blessed, they may take this information and apply it to their lives. And Lord, bless each and every one of us, I pray, until we meet each other again next week. Amen. 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 Amen.